version of Cluck Old Hen by the great claw hammer player Bertie Mae Dickens. I have transcribed that note for note. If you would like that transcription and a whole lot of other material related to this lesson, hop on over to Banjo Quest. The link is in the description below. One of the things that leaps out of Bertie Mae's playing is the, her ability to move into quarter note time and back into eighth note time seamlessly. It gives her a, the ability to create immediate space. It also allows her to grab melody notes from the fifth fret area without moving her left hand, her fretting hand at all. It's this incredible ability and I wanna show it to you today. The added benefit of learning a technique like this is it really requires your time to be bulletproof. So this is a great way to improve your overall ability to track tempo and stay in the groove of a tune. Welcome to Banjo Quest. So I'm tuned to A, just standard A tuning today. And I'm going to walk you through this technique both with striking hand only and then we're going to see how it fits within the tune itself. First, some background. I like to think of Clawhammer as fitting within an eighth note grid. We live and die by these eighth notes, as you've seen me say on this channel many times before. Our downstrokes are attached to the numbers of a measure. One, two, three, four. And our upstrokes, often on the fifth string, are tied to the ands or upbeats of a measure. So that sounds like this. One and two and three and four and one and two. So our thumb strokes always get relegated to the ands of a measure. So this isn't as limiting as it sounds because we can move our thumb, namely using the drop thumb technique, to other strings that allows us to use that thumb melodically. So the upstroke isn't just always a drone, it can be used melodically as well. Also, we have our three big families of fretting hand technique. We have our hammer-ons, our slides, and our pull-offs. Those occupy the upstroke moment in the claw hammer grid. So whenever you're doing a hammer on, pull off or slide, most of the time, 99% of the time, you're occupying what would be an upstroke. Now this is all well and good. You can solve a lot of claw hammer problems using just that, just that grid that I outlined for you. But there comes a time when some creative players like to shake things up a little bit. And Bertie Mae Dickens is one of those creative players. She would sometimes deploy her fist string on what would normally be a downstroke. We'll just say she puts the fist string on the down beat on one of the numbers of the measures. And this has a really cool effect. First of all, it makes the playing really sort of sparse. It also breaks the constant rat-a-tat-tat -tat of eighth notes that typically overwhelm a claw hammer listener. It just keeps things interesting and fresh with that striking hand. So we're gonna learn to do that today. I'm gonna walk you through it right now, but I wanted to give you the overview so you have some perspective on what it is we're actually doing here. So grab a banjo. We've got a couple patterns and then we're going to play how she plays it, note for note, how she plays it in Cluck Old Hen. But I wanna walk you towards that with stepping stones. Our first stepping stone is this. It's a two measure pattern. The first measure is our eighth note, typical claw hammer eighth note delivery, and then we fall into Bertie Mae's quarter note time in the second measure. One, two, three, four. Let me count that for you so you can feel how the resolution of my right hand is changing measure to measure. One, two, three, four. 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 Let me count the ands. One and two 
and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. I'm going to set up a metronome for this exercise because I really think we need an external timekeeper. So we're set here at 90 BPM. Oh yeah, here we go. On my count, one, two, three, four. One more time. All right, let's bump that up. We're gonna go to 110. Oh, one, two, three, four. And let's cruise. For you experts, I'm gonna bump it up a whole bunch to 150. One, two, and a one, two, three, four. One more time. So let's make this a little bit challenging. We're going to transition in and out of eighth and quarter note time in the space of a single measure. So let me show you how that works. I'm going to count just to illustrate it and then we'll play it with the metronome. One, two, three, four. 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 All right, now let's count the ends. This is a challenging thing. Try it with me. One and two and three and four and 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 one and two and three and four and. Let's put it back down to 90 where we started. Let's play this one measure and then we'll play Bertie Mae Dickens' actual phrase. Here we go. One, two, three, four. time. Let's bump it up to 110. One, two, three, four. Last time. All right, let's go, you experts out there. Play with me at one, oh, I overshot, 160. Let's do it anyway. One, two, three, four. Now, there are lots of games you can play with this. You can weave in and out of eighth and quarter note time. Now that you've gotten good at it, you can just kind of almost play a tune, keep the fretting hand out of the picture, just burn it in with that striking hand. Do something like this. All right, now let's take a look at how Bertie Dickens would play this herself. Let me play you the first few measures of her version of Cluck Old Hen. So 
So she's using it to start Cluck Old Hen off. That is the first measure of Bertie Mae Dickens' version of Cluck Old Hen. So that is our quarter note pulse. And then we do a pull off, followed by a ditty on the third fret first string. Pull off ditty. Let's roll on just that measure. One, two, three, four. time and then we go into the next measure no quarter notes there but we have this foul stanky chord that is truly weird and yet she makes it work just by force of will it is so cool so creative whoa awesome so the cool thing about this technique, not only is it sophisticated, elegant, but it is also really good for your timing. As you noticed, if you tried to play along with me with the metronome, there's something about weaving in and out of eighth note and quarter note time that messes with your inner clock. So the more you can do something like this, I think it's going to have tons of repercussions, positive ones for the rest of your timekeeping. All right, we will be going into depth, especially talking about that really weird chord that Birdie Mae uses and the B part, which is also awesome. She does some really cool creative tricks there. That is all going to be over on Patreon. Join me over there and I will see you next time on Banjo Quest. <laughs>